Praise the Lord. God bless you. This is Pastor Ray Anderson and Unhinged. Uh, I'm so glad to, to have um, you watch and have me in your space this evening. Um, I'm honored every week and humbled. Um, those of you who have watched the program and some of you have commented and seen me in public and said how much of a blessing and um, you just don't know how encouraged I've been. Um, those of you who have spoke up and said that uh, Pastor Ray, you or you, one of your guests have said something to increase my faith, to encourage me, to cause me to go a little bit further. And that's what this platform is all about. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about advancing his kingdom. And um, especially in the season that we're living in, um, everything that, that could go wrong is going wrong. But the right thing is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the word of God. And that's where our hope lies in. And um, starting out in the show, I just want to share a little bit um, about uh, the mentorship program that I do called Man Up. And it's that season. Uh, school started about three or four weeks ago. And um, October 6th would be uh, my first Man Up session at Belleville High School. And I'm so looking forward to it. This will be the third year um, that we've been doing this program in uh, uh, public schools. And I'm excited because it's been uh, such a blessing. It's been a blessing for me. It's been a blessing for students and parents and grandparents. And um, you don't know how many uh, parents have came to me and, and just encouraged and um, love what we're doing to um, bless these young men and, and uh, to help them uh, with life, uh, life experiences and giving them biblical principles. And sometimes they don't even know what I'm talking about is Bible. <laughs> uh, but God has uh, given me a gift uh, to teach and minister, um, not so much in the churchy pulpit way, uh, but just uh, by relationship, discipleship, and just talking about life. And um, on the screen right now is uh, the billboard um, that the uh, CEO owner of the station so graciously blessed me um, to have up last year. And um, uh, one of the things that we do weekly when we have our sessions is that we break bread together. We have a meal. Um, I, I just don't give out snacks, but we literally sit down and have a meal. And that's a biblical principle that uh, the children of Israel uh, when it came to family, they sat and broke bread and talked to their children. And that's one thing that I, I love about the time that I spend with these young men. Um, in the beginning of our session, we have a, a full course meal uh, where I serve them. And uh, we sit down and break bread like family and, and talk about uh, what's going on in their life, what's going on on that particular day. And um, there's a financial cost to that. And uh, the beginning of, of, of the show today, I'm admonishing you to sow in um, to this program to help me to buy food and snacks to feed these young men from week to week. As a matter of fact, uh, you can message me. Some of you guys, my, my phone number, you can give me a call. Uh, the, my cash app is on the screen right now. Um, this is good ground, and I'm asking you. Um, to sow, to help me uh, with the Man Up program to feed these young men, which is a part uh, of the program. And um, also, there's opportunity here. Again, you can message me uh, or call me. Those of you, you see my number on the screen. One of the things I ask is um, you would like your, your uh, ministry, your church, your organization, if you want to sponsor a week where you bring a meal in and you serve. Um, I, I, I invite you um, to, to, to volunteer to cook a, a meal, bring it to the school, and help serve. We need, uh, uh, today I don't have my wish list to put on the screen, but we need uh, utensils, we need cups, forks, knives, um, we need snack food, chips, and uh, water. 
Um, anything that the Lord puts on your heart concerning to help uh, the Man Up Mentorship Program, please um, um, do so as the Lord puts on your heart. Um, I'm going to start off. I just want to say a prayer um, before I, I begin to the first part of the segment. I usually have a guest uh, during the whole hour, but today I just wanted to share. Um, um, and we call this, I got this from my, my dear sister, Apostle Sonia Green, which she tells us thinking out loud. But first I want to pray. Father, I just thank you and I give you glory and, and honor and praise. And we just thank you for this opportunity uh, to come before your people, oh God, to speak life, to speak encouragement, to speak hope, oh God. And Father, I pray uh, concerning uh, those that are sick, those that are bereaved, oh God. So many people are going through so many things, oh God, but we know our hope and our encouragement is in you, oh God. So we pray that the Holy Spirit will go out and touch, oh God. Father, we pray for godly wisdom and knowledge concerning every circumstance, every situation, oh God. We pray for America right now, Lord. We pray for the culture, oh God. We pray for revival, oh God. We know that the only thing that's going to turn things around is revival, oh God. Father, we have to turn back to you. We have to have God in our culture again. We need the Holy Spirit, oh God. And so, Father, we pray your will. We pray your glory. Right now, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, just want to share a few things that's um, been on my heart you know, the last couple of days. And, and, and one of them, I, I just want to talk about patience right quick. Um, right now, because of the things that we've been through, um, pandemic, a lot of people have been off of work. A lot of people scared to go back to work. And um, um, if you're like, like me, um, still active, still go out. Um, a lot of places that we have to go on a weekly basis are short staff that they can't service you. You have to, everywhere you go, you have to wait. You have to have patience. And I, I'm watching, even myself sometimes, I get frustrated and impatient. But this is a season that I believe that God is trying to help us um, to be able to have patience and let patience have her perfect work. There's so many scriptures that talks about um, um, the, the, the fruit, the spiritual fruit, and the need to have patience, to um, wait, wait on God, wait till your change come, wait till the shift come. And a lot of times that we're in uncomfortable um, situations, we don't, if you're like me, I don't like waiting. <laughs> I want, you know, certain things I want right now, I want things to change right now. But uh, that does not happen in, in our real world. Um, you have to learn how to wait. As a matter of fact, it just seems like everybody's in a rush. I mean, um, driving. Um, everybody seems like they got to get somewhere fast and just don't, don't have any type of patience. So I'm praying especially to those that are Christians. If you confess to be in the faith, I pray that that is a virtue that you possess or either you're working on. Because in this season, um, you have to wait and you have to learn how to be patient. You have to learn, even in your waiting, how you wait. Um, I witnessed yesterday at a, at a, a restaurant, um, an in and out soul food place that I frequent. And I hadn't been there in a while. And um, it was, and matter of fact, it's a Christian establishment. I'm not saying that everybody that go in there is a Christian or everybody that works there, but I, the owner is a Christian. They, they always play uh, gospel music and try to set the atmosphere. But I noticed yesterday when I was in there that it was an a, a elderly lady, too, um, that was so impatient and so unkind to um, the young lady who was waiting on her. And um, to the point... And I thank God because the response of this young woman um, was so godly. I mean, she was yet still kind, didn't get frustrated, and um, her her response was of, of a soft tone. And um, the lady ended up, after all the ruckus she called, caused, she walked up and left before she got her food. 
And when it was my turn to uh, uh, check out and pay for my food, uh, I, I encouraged that young lady and, and told her that I was so impressed with her response that, you know, even though the lady acted the way she did, um, this young lady was just so kind, so respectful. Um, her tone was so gentle. And it made a difference because um, the Bible say a soft answer um, wards off wrath. You know, that thing could have, it could have been gasoline put on the fire, but because of the young lady's spirit, um, she maintained her poise and um, 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 operated in love and diffused what could have been a situation. And that just really had been on my heart um, concerning here again the season that we live in, um, the season that we're going through because of COVID, because of situations. Everybody is short staffed. Everybody, I mean, it's even to the point with some fast food places I've, I, over the summer, they were closed over the weekend because they didn't have enough staff to even open up. So I just pray that you would let patience possess your soul. Um, try not to be in a rush. And, and, and if you see yourself getting impatient, be kind, be prayerful, and ask God to help you um, as we go through this season. And um, uh, another thing that... Uh, here again, thinking out loud, and I, I had to even call my sister um, concerning this matter. Um, if you remember, um, I think it was 2013, um, Bishop T.D. Jakes and uh, his big event in Atlanta, Megafest. Um, that's where he has a woman, Art Thou Loose, and um, uh, manpower. And um, during that week, um, it's a big um kingdom convention and in 2013 um, in attendance was uh, Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry and uh, during one of the sessions um, Tyler Perry was inspired to give a million dollars to uh, T.D. Jakes Foundation and also in this particular service um, he prayed for the bishop uh, laid hands on him and um, a lot of people uh, were, were talking about um, that which had took place during that mega fest. And um, one of the things, uh, here again, that was 2013 and now it's 2021. And um, Tyler Perry has thus uh, purchased uh, his own studio in Atlanta. And I don't know, I think that he might uh, have a, a stock in BET because they play all of his shows. I mean, if uh, on cable, the cable networks is flooded with Tyler Perry um, produce uh, shows and films. Um, lately, over the last year or two, I've been disturbed in my spirit, and I, I've heard no one really talk about this or speak out, and I'm not a Tyler Perry hater, but I believe when God gives us um, um, influence and a platform, that those that confess to be in Christ in the kingdom should use that plan platform to advance the kingdom. And what I've noticed over the last couple of years, some of the shows that uh, Tyler Perry Studios have produced have been so ungodly, um, so countercultural from what he confesses. Um, in particular, um, one of the new shows, Sisters, um, the Oval Office, um, Ruthless. And I'm, I, in my mind, I've been thinking that somebody that confesses to be a Christian to produce such ungodly media that's influencing the culture that's, you know, they talk about cancel culture. And, and it's almost like um, I've always used the analogy for those of us who, um, in our walk, are pressing in and trying um, um, to be led by the Spirit and submit to the Spirit. And we pray, we fast, we um, go and have fellowship, we go to services, and we read our word, we meditate, we lay before the feet of Jesus. And then when we do things that are, are contrary to the culture and the walk that we're trying to walk, it's almost like blowing up a big balloon, then letting the air out, deflating it, 
um, when we um, entertain ourselves with things that are contrary or opposes our spirit. And um, some of these shows that uh, that are being produced by Tyler Perry are so ungodly. I mean, it's just promoting uh, homosexuality, um, 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 perversion, um, and even the one ruthless is, is a cult. And so, you know, here again, I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm not trying to be religious, but I'm just trying to be real. Um, we need help. Uh, matter of fact, um, there's a, a, a map of uh, the church growth in the world um, that's been on display the last uh, couple of weeks. And it shows that the fastest growing churches per population are over in Africa, the Middle East. And matter of fact, the fastest uh, growing church right now per population is in Afghanistan and Iran. And um, would you believe that the slowest growing church right now per population, per people that's being born in um, is America, that we're not produce the church is not growing and we're not producing people that are believers, people that are Christians. Um, and that saddens my heart. And I believe because the culture, um, we have such an ungodly culture right now. And even um, I think about, uh, I think it was 1962 when they took prayer out of the schools. Um, and since then, um, there's been such a decline um, because here again, um, even in the church, the platform, we have strayed away from the foundations of God. And um, I believe because uh, here again, um, prosperity and um, we don't want to, to shake the boat. If I can say that, that we're not preaching and teaching the gospel and we're definitely not preaching against sin. We're preaching a watered down message. And uh, I just want to encourage um, pastors and leaders that we need to get back to the old landmark. It should be about advancing his kingdom. And, at, at, and at, in this season, um, we should be more concerned. I mean, that should always have been the business about souls. I mean, one of the things uh, when we were doing the House of Help, i never forget this um, encounter that I had in Brightmore. Um, Brightmore, it was just south, um, near 96, off of uh, Evergreen. Those of you are, that are from Detroit, you know the Brightmore area. It's a blighted community, um, 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 poverty, drugs. And um, i never forget there was a community center that did an after-school program and had a lot of people from the suburbs that used to come in to mentor and help um, young kids from that community with uh, education. And because of the disparity with the public schools and um, education, some of those children, and even what we were dealing with with the House of Help, was so far behind concerning math, uh, reading, um, um, just period, behind the eight ball. And i never forget uh, this Caucasian woman uh, made a statement to me and she said, some of these uh, young people are so far behind that it's a possibility that they are never catch up and never be successful when it comes to being educated, um, being in the, in, uh, the job market where they would be able to get a good job. And um, she said, so one of the things that's a priority for me is to make sure that they have a relationship with Jesus. If it's the last thing that I do, that I want to introduce to them the Savior, that, that at least that um, they would be in fellowship, they would be born again, that they would be saved. And that's my cry right now because it's some things that um, might not be changed. Things might get worse when, we, when it comes to our uh, country, um, the culture of America. And uh, there's so many disparities when it comes to um, different ethnicities. Um, when we talk about politics, we talk about education, we talk about business. Uh, matter of fact, my guests that will be coming on in a few minutes, 
um, he's a businessman, and one of the things that he's um, sharing knowledge um, in urban communities to let people know to have financial literacy. But for me as a preacher and of the gospel, um, it is so important and so imperative right now that we witness and share the gospel and not just share the gospel, but discipleship. We have to take time uh, to walk with people and um, keep them close to us, especially if you're bearing spiritual fruit, if, you're, if you have something to edify and strengthen um, the brethren. Um, it is important that you walk side by side, hand in hand, um, to encourage and, and make sure that they go through the process of being born again, that um, you teach them, that you lead them in the right way. Um, a few weeks ago, I had my brother Isosa Osai, and he used the term stillborn. And I believe um, that term hit it on the head for here again, the day and time we call ourselves evangelizing and, and, and we pray with people and bring them to the Lord, but then we abandon them before um, they're born again, before they're breathing and walking and, and, and talking and actually executing um, what the word says and submitting itself to the spirit of the living God. So just want to encourage all those that are in ministry um, all those that uh, have the titles and encourage those that are, are up under you. Um, discipleship. Make sure that um, your neighbor knows Jesus. That person in line at the supermarket that's getting impatient, that's causing a ruckus. Um, witness. Be a witness. Let your light so shine that um, your Father in heaven is glorified. So, um, I don't know if my guest is, is connected yet. Amen. Amen. Because I can go on and on my soapbox and just share my heart. Um, um, I, I want to introduce, uh, um, he's uh, famous in the Belleville area, uh, Mr. Willie Mook Johnson. And I, I'm, I'm so honored to have him on my program. Um, just want to say that... Uh, um, it's been five years since I've been a part of that community, working at Belleville High School, and it's been an honor and a pleasure um, knowing Mr. Johnson and, and just recently um, knowing and understanding what he does. Hey, man, I see you on screen now. What's going hey, on, Mr. Good? Johnson? Good, good. I appreciate you having me on. Well, uh, I love uh, what you do and what you represent. And first of all, I just want to commend you on on raising your son um he's uh during the four years because he was a freshman um the first year i got there and i want to say how important it is family and to have strong men um leading and guiding and uh, being a father because here again um and here again in the season that we're living in um the enemy has came against family and the enemy has come against fathers that's uh, raising their children. And um, one thing I can say that uh, Little Mook, if you don't mind me calling him Little Mook, that's Mook's uh, nickname. This is Big Mook. One of the most respectful, um, never gave any of us any problems. And, and for me, all I, I would have to say is I'm going to holler at your dad or your grandfather. I'm going to see them. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no. I mean, it was that reverence. Um to parents that you don't find um, nowadays, it's rare. And so I just want to commend you as a dad and what you have done to set your son up for success. And so I just want I, I applaud that, and I pray that it's other men like you, which I know it is. And it's uh, some of the ones that are doing stuff, doing great things right now. So, But I, I just want you to share. I love what you're doing, and, and I want to... Uh, Tell us a little about the history, how this was birthed into existence, and the, the name is just out cold. Yeah. You know, yeah. So bad credit just, is childish. So expound on all of this. That's right. Bad credit is childish. So before we get started, though, I do want, want to say that it does take a village. It takes a village to raise these kids. It took a village to raise me as well. So, you know, 
little Mook's presence, you know, it, it, a little bit comes from me, the fear of me, but a lot of it comes from his mother, you know, and, and, and his stepmom and his grandparents. And, and, you know, we just, we provide a loving environment and we support him in everything that he does, but we also, you know, make sure that he's a respectable individual. That's, that's now, awesome. Back to the childish. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit how uh, me and my partner, Linwood Powell, got started. Um, my business partner is not able to make it today, so I apologize for his absence. But we got started with, um, you know, we actually were victims of having bad credit and being childish ourselves. Um, I know I remember I had like a 424 credit score. But it's hard to say it was for a good reason because it actually was for a good reason. So sometimes when you look at credit, right, the, the best thing you want to do is learn how to leverage it. So at that time, I was in a relationship with my wife, now, mm -hmm. but we boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. There was a decision that had to be made. Um, you know, I think I had like $2,200 to my name at that point. And I would look at my credit. She would look at her credit. Um, her credit was better than mine, and then on paper, she made more money um, with her employer that she was currently employed with. So we knew that we could build faster by sacrificing mine and leveraging hers, mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly what we did. Um, I took the money that I had and paid off of her credit. We built her credit and we established all the major things that we have today, the cars, the vehicles, the homes, um, things of that nature. And it provided us to be able, it gave us, it was like a stepping stool, right? Because a lot of times everybody in a relationship, they don't understand like relationships means compatibility. It means like we are one. So yes. there's, there's no one over another, right? And so at that time you have to determine you know, one of us have to sacrifice for the better sake of the team, which the team is us. So what we did was we paid all of her stuff off and then we started building her credit. And my credit was junk, you know, and I was okay with that mm -hmm. because we were able to get an apartment that we were able to share, you know what I'm saying? We were able to have beautiful children and continue to build that way. And then eventually when we get all the things that we need, now we can shift focus to me. And then it and then it will help build me up to actually have us both level up because one great credit score, one seven fifty credit score can provide you with a bunch of things. But two seven fifty credit scores in the same household can provide you to unlimited amounts of things. And that's unlimited amounts of investments, unlimited amounts of whatever it is that you think you want to do or 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 believe that you can do you are able to do um we started off as time travel credit repair which that is still a current business of ours today um linwood powell created the catchphrase bad credit is childish and when we started wearing like i started I, you know i moved like a corvette so i started pressing up t-shirts and things <laughs> of that nature and we would go to like the airport and like the the way people just cling on to it and they, they think it's funny, like, but it's a pain point, right? Like we're not yes. trying to talk about people. We're just trying to have people set better examples for the younger generation. So it became a pain point and it became highly like everybody started to fall in love with it. And so we decided to shift um, Bad Credit is Childish and make and turn it into an actual movement. So what Bad Credit is Childish is, is being responsible and being accountable. We're yes. all adults, right? You can't ask your child to do something that you're not willing to do. And I personally think that that's a lot of problems with a lot of um, parents today, right? Like it's hard to tell your child that, you know, you need to go get a college degree, but you don't have a um, college degree, right? Yes. Or you need to go work out, but you're not a replica of what he should be. Like if, if you're not going to work out, why would he want to work out? go work out if you're not providing for your family what makes him want to grow up and learn to be able to provide for his future to come so i think that's that's very very important and so what we created at bad credit is childish is what we call bcic academy bad credit is childish academy 
Um, there's some great news that I want to share with you right now, Ray, but I might have to share with you off the air because it's, it's in contract right now. Okay. But Backhart of the Scottish Academy is a youth athletic, youth student athletic credit builder program. So we all know as kids, we're never taught about financial literacy, right? We have no clue. We'll go through college. They'll set up tables. They'll offer you free T-shirts. If you sign up for this free credit card, we're thinking it's free cash, capital. Go buy a pair of shoes. No way to pay it back. We ain't thinking about paying it back. And to later find out that this has hindered our credit score for seven years, right? And, and, it's and just mess this up um, for yep. life if we don't get it straight. Yep. And there's some things that the government like to keep secret, right? For whatever whatever it may be. And I don't know why financial literacy is not taught in school as important as it is. I remember being in college and I had to take a course called Quantitative Methods. And mm -hmm. to this day, I still couldn't tell you what it is or how I passed or any of that, right? <laughs> but what I can tell you is, <laughs> what I can tell you is learning about financial literacy makes life easier for any individuals, any couples, any families financially. If you learn how to be accountable, you learn how to be responsible, you learn how to budget, you learn how to save, these are tools that you can you can keep, right? And things that you will never forget because you'll always be able to get the house that you want, get the car that you want, right? Get the car that you deserve. And it opened up so much life for me because credit changed my life specifically because it provided me with the entrepreneurial opportunity and by going in reverse, building my wife's credit first, we were able to stand alone on her income to help build the, the um, opportunity for me to be here where I am today. You, you know what's, so this you know what's interesting um, is that whole principle of, of good or excellent credit is leverage. Um, those that have that understanding, especially when it comes to the er other ethnicities that are taught um, um, financial literacy, you get to keep more money in your pocket. <laughs> you have an excellent credit score, that means you can less down, uh, uh, less of an interest rate. Um, you're paying less, and it's like those that have more money pay less. And those that have bad credit <laughs> pay a higher interest rate and pay more for goods. Because the goal was OPM, using other people's money. A great credit score is only great when it's time to use it, right? Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people are afraid to be in debt, but they have to understand that all debt isn't bad debt. Okay. There's people right now throughout the pandemic who are leveraging their debt and a lot of people don't know this, but if you have built business credit and you have personal credit, you need your personal credit to establish your business credit. Yes. But your business credit doesn't report on your personal report. So these are the things that you can learn to create and use for your everyday living. So if just give you an example. Say you got a $10,000 business credit card, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of using your personal credit, you can continue to make, keep your personal credit great Use that 10000 and say, okay, I'm going to put $1,000. I'm going to pay off my cable for the year. I'm going to pay off my DT for the year. I'm going to open up access to the money that I usually accumulate within the one week or biweekly, however you get paid, to be able to use for different things, whether it's investments, whether it's, 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 it's whatever you want to use it for, mm -hmm. right? And then we know when you go buy a mortgage, when you go buy a mortgage, they assess the way that they come up with your pre-approval rate or your pre-approval amount is they assess the current debt that you have showing on your actual personal report. So even if you get a car and you put the car in your business name, that fifty, sixty thousand dollars debt is not going to show on your personal report, which gives you additional fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of house. Okay. So I'm gonna go backwards a little bit. BCIC Academy is strictly for students. It's a credit builder program. We're super excited kids specifically on how to um, obtain their credit report, how to determine their inaccuracies. We provide financial literacy tools like financial literacy cards, which specifically gives you the terms and the definitions as well as tips on how to continue to maintain your credit. Because again, 
not only will we teach you how to get a 700 credit score in the first 90 days of signing up, in the first 90 days of signing up, we will get you a 700 credit score wow. by doing everything we are asking you to do. Not only will you get that, we will keep you on the site by teaching you how to be accountable and how to be the responsible. And those are the two key factors that it takes to maintain a great credit score. We want to help you establish your first bank account. We want to help you get your first credit card. We want to walk you through, you know, purchasing your first home or your first rental property or, or, or your first automobile. We're not here to send you on a limb. We want to be able to walk you through everything by we have weekly podcasts. We have video as long as visual. We have, um, uh, monthly webinars with professional athletes, professional athletes that can tell you where they messed up at, meaning they've had millions, mm -hmm. they've had millions, and now they look back and they've used all of their cash and never ever established credit. I, 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 I kind of want to address that because, um, years ago, um, one of my one of my friends, uh, Eric Snow, a professional NBA player from Ohio, played at Michigan State. Um, I went uh, to uh, I was just talking about it earlier, Megafest, um, Bishop T D Jakes, and they had the NBA Christian group and uh, Michael Irv and Deion Sanders and uh, some of the NFL stars. I had the pleasure of meeting with, and one of the things I've learned. Uh, concerning pro professional athletes and what you're saying that didn't have um, financial literacy did not take advantage of opportunities that was afforded to them. Like the NBA have a dollar for dollar um, 401k. And if you put in a million, they'll match it with a million. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know that those people that's running the league know how to manage money. They know how to invest. And um, like you said, a lot of uh, NFL players, uh, NBA players, um, they don't have that cash flow and, and, and living uh, paycheck to paycheck now and, and not able to uh, afford the things that um, the lifestyle and the success they had in their later years. And um, so I, I know how true that is and um, really um, uh, commend you again because how important it is to start young people, young men off early with those principles. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's extremely important. Um, again, you have to understand the reason we're targeting, we, we say student athletes, but we're targeting all students in general. Mm -hmm. Because as a student athlete, just imagine entering a draft, right? And you're a top 10 pick. You're literally about to go from being having no money mm -hmm. to being a multi-millionaire. And the first thing you want to do as a kid is you want to show appreciation to your parents, your brothers, your closest friends. Some of those friends that aren't even true friends, they just hung around just because they knew your, your abilities and what they could potentially receive upon you actually being drafted, right? right so right. what they do is they try to appease everybody. And then at the end of the day, it'll roll back over to where they can't even maintain the lifestyle that they want to live. So... Imagine getting handed millions at the age of 20, 21 years old. You're going to assume that you can pay cash for everything. You don't know about taxes. Mm -hmm. You don't know about, about your agent fees, your lawyer fees. You're just playing ball, right? right and you're right. assuming that you get a $5, a $5 million signing bonus that you have $5 million when really you have like 2.7. Okay. Right. So with BCIC Academy, we want to teach them at an early age so they can learn to make important decisions, learn to turn down things that don't seem right, learn mm -hmm. how to budget at an early age, learn how not to live outside their means, right? Yes, Just sir. because you make a million dollars doesn't mean a million dollars is going to forever live in your bank account. That's, that's true. We have to learn how to manage money. Absolutely. And as kids, you know, you, you could tell by like giving your son or, or your daughter or your niece or your nephew, you give them $100 a day, I guarantee you in seven days they don't got that, none of that $100 <laughs> left. They don't get to the ice cream truck. Right, they don't right. want to get a pair of shoes. Ain't none of it left. Right, right. right. Especially if they haven't been taught anything exactly. concerning money. 
our job. This is our job as parents to teach our kids. So I'll give you a small story of how things went with my mom and my parents with me Mm -hmm. and what I learned throughout the course of building and repairing my credit to what I was able to do for my kids. So back in the day, our parents didn't really know about financial literacy either. All they used to tell us was what, Ray? Make sure you pay your bills, bills on, time. on time. Make sure you pay your <laughs> bills on time. That's it, right? Yeah, my mother was a stickler for that. Absolutely. So I was a minority in, in a majority white college. At, okay. I went to Norfolk University in Midley, Michigan. And I would graduate with my friends. Like, these are my closest friends. Um, and once we graduated, they would go straight into getting a house and straight into getting a car. Mm -hmm. And I'm steady looking like, how are y'all getting this? And the only thing I was able to establish was a target card, (laughs) right? Yes, sir. But it's very simple. If you're out there listening and you have children, the most important reason you want to build your credit is because you want your kids to be able to piggyback off of your great credit. What do I mean by that? You can have, say you have a $10,000 credit card that's, has 10 years worth of history and history is 35 percent of your credit grade Mm -hmm. and you have an extremely low balance with perfect history i mean never being late if you add your son your daughter your niece or nephew to this card the next month that that card cycles on your credit report it's going to show up on their credit report as if they had the card for 10 years wow ten thousand dollar limit very low so for somebody who's a blank somebody who has no credit you can literally put your put their name as an authorized user on your already established credit card and it will skyrocket their score over 100 points wow these are things that we were never taught these are things that we don't even know right my parents don't even notice when i asked my parents to add me onto a card they thought i was up to something (laughs) right because they just didn't know right 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 right. but me becoming a professional at this and, and them actually seeing my path and seeing what I'm doing and seeing how everything works, now they understand. And it's not that we're dumb. It's not that we're dumb or it's not that we just don't know and we're not given the tools nor the, the, the platform for the information to be able to know what to do. We, we don't even know what credit is. I got people, I got friends that has never, ever even viewed their own credit report. Wow. Wow. And I I know some that don't have a bank account, you know, and just just recently because of uh, media and some of these uh, uh, new companies uh, that that charge them for giving like these companies that they they advertise getting your pay early so you can get so you can be broke even earlier. Don't even understand that they charging you for you to get that money early the interest rates and what the, the fees that's going on. But like you said, if we're not exposed, if we don't have that knowledge, and and, and, and the rough part is that we, um, as uh, African-Americans, black people, we're already behind the eight ball because of the system. Absolutely. And it's hard for us, it's hard for us as African-Americans to trust, right, due to everything that, that a majority of us or our ancestors has, has went through. It's hard for us to trust even our own kind, yes. right? But we have to we have to start showing by example. Like, I, it, it hurts me to see, you know, how kids nowadays are cursed in front of an adult when back in our days, you cursed in front of an adult, you didn't even have to, you knew that that was somebody's mama. Right, And when she came trouble. outside and said something to you, you was respectable. You, you you apologized and it was it was just that. Now it's so many disrespectful children and it's being allowed by the parents. Mm-hmm. And we as parents have to step up and, and and stop allowing this because what it is doing is it's tarnishing our children's and our children's children. And it's painting a it's already painting a picture of of like Instagram, for example, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's extremely good for small businesses. It's extremely good for people who's actually trying to market or who's actually trying to obtain an audience. But it's not good for people who's trying to trying to be somebody that they're not or trying to make yourself look as like somebody that you're not. You have to understand, you don't need to impress anybody. You don't need to impress anybody. You got to love within yourself and love the people that genuinely love you. 
Amen. Right? Amen. You, you know, like, and I think that's our biggest problem is just wanting other people to think that we're we're something that we may not. So we may take a penitentiary chance to 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 gain access to money that we don't even know what we're gonna do when we get the money. Exactly, and and the risk factor, that risk possibility factor. that you could lose your freedom. And not, you know, you won't be around and, and, you know, your family, children, and 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 it's a vicious cycle that, that we have going on as far as African Americans. And um, one of the things that I noticed um, being around successful um, uh, other ethnicities, and like you were saying that um, I know that uh, some, some wealthy families, uh, their, their children uh, in college, like you said, they had credit cards where they were brought in on, with their name on and established credit. And I even know some African-Americans because, you know, I, I came from uh, the street and then God saved me and changed my life. But I had a mother who had those principles that paid her bills. Back in the day, she had American Express. Her credit was that good. In the 60s, she bought a house in northwest Detroit. Uh, for twenty twenty thousand dollars to end up being worth over a hundred thousand dollars, she had paid it off. Like we had been there years, she probably paid the house off in ten fifteen years. And um, um, but seeing that those principles, the advantage that was uh, afforded, um, I have friends that um, uh, and they're African Americans, but their family were were of a different kind. They understood financial literacy. They made their children invest, bought property like as teenagers. They owned homes and uh, bought real estate and um, um, flipped those things and, and, and created wealth. Absolutely. And um, Absolutely. one of the things that, I, uh, because I know when, when Lil Moot graduated, um, I remember you coming up there giving him a car. Oh, no. No, no, no. Well, not giving him to it, but he had a, he has a, had, yeah. but. So, so what I did, I, I'll walk you through that, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as I, I believe as a parent, as a father, your job is to protect and provide. Yes. I believe that your, you, your living should be to be able to set your kids up or to help them provide them a easier lifestyle when you're actually gone. So for my son, I've been building his credit up since he was 17 years old. He, 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 he don't even, he's still, to this day, I don't give him all the tools to open up and do everything he needs to do because I want him to strictly concentrate on playing ball. Okay. When it's his time, I guarantee you he'll be able to get approved for whatever he wants. But what I did was I added him on my credit cards as authorized users. I um, helped him sign up through a few different, um, programs that we also we also have um, on BCIC Academy when you join as a member and BCIC Academy is only twenty nine ninety nine a month. Okay, it's very affordable for parents, very affordable for kids, especially student athletes who's getting stipends. So for Lil Mook, I made him go with me to the dealership, pick his own car up, apply for it in his name, sit there for hours. You know how long you had the dealership? The process, yeah, the process. Oh man, he was just sitting there like I can't. We've been here three, four hours. Since <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, but I've allowed him to to understand ownership, mm -hmm. to understand that. Look, I personally, I want you to live your childhood life. I don't want you to worry about money. I don't want you to worry about none of that because that's our job as parents. You're not going to get everything you want. Mm -hmm. You're just not. Right, right, right. right. I'm not going to raise you that way, but you will have everything that you need. So your main focus, if you want to go to school and you want to become an engineer and you want to play football, I want you to experience the best four or five years in college that you can experience. I don't want you to have to worry about some of the things that other people have to worry about. I want you to experience the best experience you can experience and let us do the work. But he did. He signed his car. He got his car. He's never been late on a payment. He also, I've also given him access to one of my credit cards and I've set him up. A um, 
a limit. And adults, this is some things you can do with your credit card. If you put your child on a credit card, the credit card will come to the house. If you don't want them to use it, you cut the card up and just throw it up. Just because you cut the card up, it still will report on their credit report and give them good credit history. If you wanted to teach them a little bit of responsibility, but you may have to be a little bit more accountable on the back end because they will mess up. But it's better for them to mess up and you be there than them to mess up and you not be there. Right, right. So you can establish them a $200 limit and say, hey, I want you to use this for gas and food, right? Mm -hmm. And you, and the thing that I love about putting your kids on, a, on, on, on your credit card as authorized user is you can see every transaction. <laughs> you got a paper trail. Oh, I know every, I know, I know you were just rolling <laughs> out, you were Burger King. You must have been on a date because you was at Applebee's and spent $30. <laughs> Ain't nothing about $30. You know right, I mean? right, 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 right. <laughs> you know but what that's that's some wisdom there yeah it's like i want to be able to i can't control you i don't want to control you but i want to be able to watch over and just make sure that you're doing everything the right way because i i would rather punish you than you being punished somewhere else or you being in a car with somebody and they decide to do something and you just sitting in the car but everybody look at you and blame you and now your whole career is over People go through these type of things, and us as parents, we have to be hands-on with our kids. Yes. We have to. You can't give your kids to somebody and let somebody else raise your kids and then complain about it in the end. You just can't. And it takes a village. I, I, I've touched so many, so many children's souls because I've coached mm -hmm. football, you know what I'm saying, and these kids still look at me, uh, look up to me to this day. They might not have liked me during practice. They might not have understood while I had them running extra laps or while we stayed after a little bit longer than everybody else. But it was, a, it was to see how bad you really wanted it. And it was attack. I wanted to attack the sport like you're going to attack life. Yes. Nothing yes. is going to be given to you. And you're only going to get in life what you put into it. That's, that's right. It. Uh, that's what I, I, I try to... Um, in part on the young man, the hard work pays off. Um, there's nothing to replace hard work, making right choices, um, especially if you want a good life. Um, you want a, a solid foundation. And um, Mr. Johnson, uh, I commend you and what you're doing. And I know that you got something down the pipeline. Um, like you said, you, you're not uh, ready to announce it yet, but I'm excited what you shared with me. And um, I'm looking forward to having you back on. Uh, matter of fact, share, uh, give us your information, how we can get in touch, um, how they can sign up for the program. And, and, and I actually, I'm reaching out to you because I'm reestablishing even at 60. Um, I'm going through some things. As a matter of fact, let me, I, I, I've been reestablishing my credit. Um, one of my sons, my, my youngest boy, I helped him get a car. The car was repossessed, and I had to get it off my credit, and I'm reestablishing myself. But I had an incident that happened to where I was paying a bill to reestablish my credit, and they were taking the money to pay a charge off. <laughs> and I had to get that. that it was part, yeah, and uh, for like about 60 days, um, two payments was applied to a charge off, and it took like three month, months for it to correct, and it affected my score, which was going up and now went down. And I was so frustrated. I was talking about patience earlier. I almost lost it because here I am trying to reestablish myself and do the right thing. And it was a mistake made, but I, I'm suffering the consequence. But anyway, that's my story. But share. Right. Go ahead. I want to say this. I want to say this. Things like that do happen. Like it, it does happen often, mm -hmm. meaning it could be a mistake on the company side. But that's why we preach at Bad Credit is Childish and Bad Credit is Childish Academy to start monitoring your credit report. Sign okay. up with Identity IQ, sign up with Experian Direct, Equifax Direct, TransUnion Direct. They will alert you when things are changed on your credit report. Okay. Right? So if you know your credit card is due on the first, you might want to pay it on the 25th so that when it reports, it's reported early. If not, if you don't see any action, sometimes it's, it's, it's okay to, to log into the app and make sure that that item's been paid or to give them a call and say, hey, I sent in this payment. I'm just trying to reassure that you have received it because a late payment 
on your credit report, a recent late payment on your credit report, mm-hmm. I've seen it take people's scores down 60 to 85 points. Wow, wow. Yeah, just a recent late payment. And I would hate for that to happen to anyone, especially when it's not your fault. Yeah, I was, man, I was frustrated. <laughs> I was like livid. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, this just happened to me recently. But, um, and I'm going to give you a call, and I want to encourage uh, all my viewing audience that if, if, if your credit is an issue, this is the guy, this is the man that you need to call. And, and, and especially um, with your children, your, your young men and young women, because we ought to leave um, uh, inheritance, not for just our children, but our children, children. That's a biblical principle. So um, I want you uh, to, to tell them how to get in touch with you, um, your uh, email address your website and i know we're gonna put it on the screen but i so appreciate you and what you do and what you do in that community in belleville um you're a shining star man i just you know i ain't i I ain't trying to sugarcoat or brush your ego but i'm just you know i'm just real um i appreciate what you do man in in your presence like you say you've been a coach um in that region and um the young people and even um your peers they look up to you so keep yeah. on doing what you're doing, man. Absolutely. We, we definitely going to keep on doing what we're doing. And I appreciate you providing this platform to, for, for me to actually speak on. So the name is Bad Credit is Childish. You can Google the name. Um, the actual Academy for Kids, and I want to throw this out there one more time. If you had an opportunity to present your children with a 700 credit score in 90 days of signing up, would you do it? For the cost of twenty nine ninety nine a month, twenty nine ninety nine a month. That's it. Wow. As long as you stay on course, as long as you do everything that's implemented in this program, they will not only create a seven hundred credit score, but they'll learn how they'll learn accountability, they'll learn responsibility, and they'll always maintain this. And this is something that will carry on for a lifetime. Parents. We know how important credit is. We've messed our credit up before. Do not let your kids go through the same thing. This is our job to protect them. Let's not let our kids go through the struggles because they may not have the resources that you had to get out. Well, hey, Mr. Johnson, one of the things I want to do with um, my man up sessions at the high school, I want you to come in and and that particular evening, we're going to invite parents for you to share and um, share the program so, you know, we, we can get some of these young men on track. We can get them set up financially uh, that they be established and be successful and be ahead of the game. So I, I, I – go ahead. I, I, want you to, I want you to do this for me, Ray, because I'm going to go ahead and spill the beans. So we are currently under contract with Michael Vick. So we plan to get him up here, and when we get him up here, I would love for us to set something up at Belleville High School. We can set some up at Belleville High School, we can set some up at Cass Tech High School, whatever school you want to. I want to hit as, major- as many schools as we possibly can, and I want to get in front of these kids and just let and just put the word credit in their head and tell them to research it and learn about financial literacy and get in front of their parents so they can start understanding how important this is for their children. This is more important than an athletic scholarship. Believe it or not, we can touch on that a, a little bit longer. Uh, athletic scholarship, if they do everything they're supposed to do, we'll give them uh, um, a diploma, a yes. bachelor's degree, which can help them further on in life. But it does not guarantee them an opportunity in professional sports. Amen. Everybody's not going. Everybody's not going to play professional ball, but take Everybody advantage of the opportunity. Ball. The doors that's be open. Um, in other areas that you would just be successful in life. Well, my and, and imagine how many miserable, how many, imagine how many people are miserable working nine to five. <laughs> we provide an opportunity. We provide. Now some people like the nine to fives. Right, right, I right. I totally understand. But we provide an opportunity for them to create their own venture and to be successful. Entrepreneurship. Is that they want to do? Yes. Pursue their own dreams, like real life dreams, not you know, falling asleep and wishing upon a star. We're talking about presenting real life opportunities for your kids to never have to walk into a factory and see what a plantation actually looks like or feels like. Cause I've been there 10 years 
worked at Ford, it ain't that, it. That's it that's not it. it. It's and like it you said, it. it's it's modern day slavery. That's exactly what it is. Well, my brother, I I I, I appreciate you. Our, our time has ran out, but we, we I'm gonna have you back. And um, oh, real soon, real soon, and you heard him over the airwaves. What's coming down the pipe, and and what we want to bring to uh, our, our, our high schools, the information and the opportunities. So thank you, God bless you, and I got to come uh, see uh, Little Mook play um, this year in, in the what? home game. You're not doing that on October 9th. It's, it's 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 a lot of us going, like a lot of the family going. We're actually going to go and we're actually going to stay the night, then wake up and tailgate. Okay. October 9th, they play Northwood University at Grand Valley State. Let me know. I'll get you a ticket, man, and come on out. Hey, do it. Give me a ticket. I'll be there. <laughs> okay. Well, well, done deal. It's a done deal. Done deal. All right, That's man. It. Love you. You have a good evening, and I'll see you Love soon. You All right. Bless you, man. You well. Thank you. God All bless right. You. All right. Well, our, our time is up, and I, I just thank God for my, my guest, and uh, I hope uh, the information that he's given us, that you take advantage of, of his program um, for you and your, your, your children. And so um, I thank you for spending time with us this evening, and um, we love you, but God loves you even the more. Be encouraged, be in faith, hope, and trust in God. This is Pastor Ray and Unhinged, and we'll see you next week. God bless you.